What's up gangsters? Let's do 10 minutes of technique on how to use oils to fade some paint. Okay, so what I'm working on is this uh, Tacom, Takeom, Take Home, however you say it, uh, 135th scale Kraz 260 truck. And the base color is basically this light blue, which is just Mission Models acrylics that I've sprayed on here um, on top of a rust base, which was then dull coated and then hairsprayed, and then I did all my chipping and so forth. Um, and what I want to do uh, is create some fade in the paint. Um, and just to make it clear, I am working directly on the paint. There hasn't been any kind of varnish or clear coat applied to this. Um, so, this is the look that I'm after. You can see that I also am doing some rust work uh, and some tones in the rust. Um, and the techniques are really the same for both things, but what I'm going to really deal with is creating these areas of kind of light blue faded paint. Okay, so what I have here is I've got some Windsor Newton oils that I've uh, spread out here. A lot of people like to use cardboard to leach the oils out, but I like this uh, heavy duty uh, printer paper. Um, it's brochure paper. It's heavier than 24 pound copier paper. And I like it because it's white and it uh, does a good job of leaching out the oils. And I have a whole ream of the stuff. <laughs> and it's a lot easier than uh, cutting a chunk of cardboard off of a box. So. Uh, I, I've been using this a lot, and I actually like it better than the cardboard. Dear Lord, compressor, shut up. Okay, hopefully we won't have to deal with too much of that. Anyhow, um, I better start my stopwatch over here, or I'm going to go way over the 10 minutes. Uh, okay, so anyway, what I have laid out here is... Um, my blue and my white that are really are what I'm going to use to fade the paint. The rest of this stuff is for rust and, and dust. Now, I want to make a point because somebody was mentioning this morning about oil dot filtering on Scale Modeler's Critique Group. Now, oil dot filtering is where you'll see people just take uh, every color of oil they have, apparently, red, blue, green, yellow, purple, whatever, and they'll put little dots all over their model and then they'll take a brush that's damp with thinner and they'll just go around and kind of blend it all in. Now, I kind of feel like that's the Chicken McNuggets version of oil paint rendering. It's very much a shotgun effect. And yeah, it will create a sort of variety of tones, but it also can get muddy in a hurry and not look really that good at all. Um, but the bottom line for me is that it doesn't really represent any sort of reality. It's just a quick and easy way to make your paint more interesting than just having one solid color. But what I find, um, no matter how many reference photos and real vehicles I look at, is that paints tend to fade, for the most part, into a lighter version of their base color. Now, yes, yeah, sometimes you will get some weird things where they will sort of change to a different color. There's certain camouflage greens I know that when they fade, they turn kind of red or pinkish or, or tan. Um, but with this, with this light blue, that's not the case. So that's why I have basically blue and white to do the work here. And what I'm gonna do is, this is the rest of the cab and I haven't done any of the work on it yet. And what I want to do is focus on the upward facing surfaces because that's where fading is going to happen. And a little bit on the sides. So, um, but actually before I do that, let me just make another note about these, about these uh, oils. Let me zoom in here for a second so I can show you some differences. Most of these are the more expensive Windsor and Newton artist oils, and I prefer those. I think they do a better job. Uh, for this type of stuff, you can't see quite as much difference, but when you start making washes and things, you'll find that the less expensive Winton and other student grade oils tend to break up a lot more, um, and you don't get as solid uh, or, or, or as much density with your washes, and so I prefer to spend a little bit more money. 
But um, what you get in addition to a lot higher pigment content with artist grade is you generally get a bit more oil. And you can see the differences here. This, for example, that is artist grade burnt umber. Um, this is raw umber. This is uh, regular white, titanium white. Um, uh, oh wait, this is, uh, let's see, there's a little bit of ivory black there. Um, but this one right here is what uh, Winsor Newton calls their alkyd uh, paints. Actually, no, it's this one right here. This is their alkyd product line. And it's an artist grade oil, but it's got a different composition. And the alkyd is basically just a synthetic fat, if you will. Oils work off of uh, what's called a drying oil principle. Uh, normal artist oils have linseed oil in them, um, and it's basically just a fat, and it basically just it has a curing mechanism that um, uh, basically does a kind of a cross-linking thing to turn it into um, a, 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 a paint shell. Alkyds are just a synthetic version of that, and they're basically what you'll find in enamels that come in a bottle. Um, they work fine. They do dry a little faster and tougher than these regular oil paints in my experience. But you can kind of see the difference in the way the oil leaches out of that one. This one over here, actually I misspoke. This is one of the Winton oils and um, they come out of the tube a lot stiffer. Uh, not nearly as creamy and smooth as the artist grade stuff. Again, for what I'm doing here, it doesn't really matter, but if you're actually painting with these things where you want to create smooth blends, that stiffness can be a little bit of, a, of an issue. So anyway, back to the task at hand. So what I'm going to do is uh, just take some of this regular white this is one of my favorite brushes. This is a, a, a Royal Langnickel number no. two. Um, it's a combo. Um, it's kind of a kind of a filbert thing. Um, I don't know exactly what it's called, but I love it. It's my favorite brush for this type of thing. So I'm gonna just start working now. If I just go around and put dots on there, and then I come along and try and blend those in, let me show you what happens. You get dots. And, and that's okay. If that's what you want, then that's fine. But what I'm after is to create a more overall faded look. I want some irregular patterns, but I don't want it to look like I just took my brush and spooged a bunch of dots on there. So I'm going to actually try and, and paint this. And I want it to be a... Uh, a little a little more subtle here because this is right next to the windscreen doesn't see quite as much sun probably um, so this isn't gonna be super dramatic but you can see as I'm working here let me zoom in you can see that I'm just using the same brush to do all of it and I just keep working that paint into the surface doesn't take a lot. I mean, it, it's just, there's barely any paint on the tip of that brush. A little bit of oil goes a long way. So you just keep working it. And, and you'll see as I go how the paint starts to break up. The more I brush it, the more it starts to kind of break up and, and, and take on a more uh, natural look because what I'm after is to have a kind of a speckly mottled surface. I don't want anything that looks like it was done with a paintbrush. So I've got that top surface done pretty well. Now what I'm gonna do is I want to pull some down the sides here. Not a lot so I'm just kind of painting that that pattern that you know will give it that give it a sort of a vertical look so that it's kind of streaky from you know rain or whatever 
but more importantly so that it's heavier on the upper surface than it is lower down okay so you can kind of see from the continued brushing hopefully that'll show up on camera it's kind of hard for me to tell but you can hopefully see how that sort of starts to break up and give you some variation all right so let me flip it around and do the other side real quick and then I will show you the final step and who knows we might make it in less than 10 minutes what are the odds not good right not with me okay so again I'm just kind of sorry this is one of the reasons why I rarely try to demonstrate this stuff on camera it's just hard hard to do it and show it at the same time and talk about it I'm just and keep it all in <laughs> keep it all in the, in the camera frame and all that stuff and I just I'm not good at it uh, so anyway there we go you can see I've got that kind of uh, uniformly applied there and streaked in a you know downward direction okay now Here's what I feel like is maybe the most important step, okay? I have a sponge here, and I'm going to dip this in some mineral spirits, but just barely, okay? So you can see I've just barely got some on there. Now I'm going to take, and I'm going to wick that out on a paper towel and get most of it off of there. And you can see they're the dots of thinner uh, mineral spirits that I'm that I'm leaving there there's probably also a good minute to say something about mineral spirits because I know there's a lot of confusion I see it all the time uh, mineral spirits is a hundred percent petroleum distillate whether you get the straight-up cheapo hardware store mineral spirits that are in this jar or you get the Windsor Newton sans odor that I also use sometimes that's been further refined to have the sulfur compounds taken out of it so that it doesn't stink. That is a petroleum distillate and it is the only thing that I recommend using with these oil paints. I know that a lot of oil painters who work on canvas like to use turpentine, especially for brush cleaning. Hey, that's fine, more power to you. Turpentine is hotter than mineral spirits and I see all the time that, that, you know, dudes are wrecking their paint, eating through their clear coat, tearing something up because they use turpentine. So my recommendation is if you're doing oil work, stay completely away from anything that involves turpentine. Okay, now that I've said that, here's the, here's the trick, okay? This is the move. Okay, so now that I've got the oils fairly nicely spread out there I'm gonna take and I'm gonna just start bouncing around on it and you can see immediately what it's doing it's giving me a a, a nice random kind of a speckled look that is, I don't know any other way to get that. See what I mean there? Hopefully that will show up on camera. See that? It's almost like chipping. And, and you can kind of use a sponge over oils to do a sort of chipping effect. But you can see it just kind of gives you that natural, speckled, dappled, look that paint gets when it's been beaten on by the sun and there's dust and there's rain and there's all kinds of things and it just rarely looks um, really uniform and I think it's uh, I think it's nice because it doesn't look at all like it was done with a brush and however much you want to do it you know you can it's it's again it's one of those things that's the great thing about oils is that um, you just have to get in there and experiment and see what kind of look you you like and if you don't like it 
then you can very easily do this. Dip a Q-tip in some mineral spirits. Doesn't take much. And... Just wash it right off. And I could do this, I could, I could wash that off tomorrow if I wanted to. And speaking of tomorrow, because I know a lot of people are curious about how long it takes this stuff to dry. Um, and um, how long should you wait before you do any clear coating or anything like that? Um, I will be totally confident in clear coating this tomorrow. Um, and I'll go right on top of it with the dull coat. Uh, or whenever I'm done. I have some other effects that I'm going to be doing as well. Um, that I'll do before I, 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 I want to lock it all in. But um, that's, uh, that's, that's, all, that's pretty much all I ever wait is about 24 hours. No, there's just not really any reason to have to wait any longer than that. So there we go. That gives me a nice natural look. Um, that I think will tell the story pretty well. There you go. Just like that. Okay, yeah, I know, I know. It's been 15 minutes and I thought I was done, but of course I thought of a couple of things that were worth saying before I signed off here. Let's say that you do this effect and you want to sort of reduce the... Uh, the drama or the contrast okay all you got to do is take a clean soft brush like this larger filbert that I've got here and just go back over that and work that a little bit and you can see it happening before your very eyes you will see the contrast uh, being kind of knocked down there very simple and again that's the versatility of oils they are so mobile and you can and you can just make them do just about anything that you that you want them to so you can see just a little bit less just a little less of a dramatic effect there there you go hopefully you can see that on camera uh, one other point that's important with oils is keep your brushes separate <laughs> right after i stopped I accidentally dropped the brush that I was using for the white and it barely touched this brown stuff. Um, and you can see right here where I was trying to get the, uh, get the black out of it or brown or whatever it was and it's just very difficult to do. And you can see over here uh, with the blue and the white I was originally using the same br uh, one brush for white and as soon as I started using the blue, it basically ruined that brush for any more of the work with the white. So uh, you have to keep a number of brushes going and you have to keep track of them. It's also important to note that I'm using these brushes dry. As soon as I put this in thinner, everything changes. It's not going to behave the same. Uh, if you want it to be, you know, if that's the effect you want, that's fine. Use thinner. But more often than not, when I'm doing this kind of work, I'm using these brushes dry. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully you can see that this is a pretty easy technique to use and that uh, it's tremendously versatile. There's lots and lots of cool stuff you can do with oils and it's just something you gotta really get into and try it for yourself. Uh, anyway, I hope you found it useful and as always, I appreciate you watching. Much love.